Many years ago, following a catastrophic global flood, there was an ice age. Then there was a stone age. And thousands of years BC, the world entered the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. Only a couple of centuries ago, James Watt harnessed a power as old as time, steam power. This ushered in the Industrial Age. Now we have moved into the Ideological Age. The what? The Age of Ideology. 99% of the billions of people alive at this time don't realize this. It causes much of the trouble, for it gives the extraordinary people like Gandhi, Marx, Hitler, Mao, Martin Luther King, or Osama bin Laden power to the 1% who do. We will only understand what's going on in the world when we understand ideologies. Ideology is a faith which grips the minds and hearts of a nation or group. It gives a philosophy, a passion, and a plan to change the world by war or by negotiation either way. It creates the consciousness of a people with a worldview committed unto death to the rule of one idea. Even suicidal terrorists of hate and greed are guided by ideology. The future depends on the ideology that grips the minds and the hearts of millions and changes the human will. You may not be interested in ideology, but ideologies are interested in you. Let's have a look at ideological specimens that everyone has heard of. Specimen number one, Nazism. One man, Hitler, had an idea. His idea was, one race shall rule. He wrote a book, Mein Kampf, cleansed the world of all the old and undesirables. The idea struck a chord in millions of hearts and minds. In a few years, a broken down country became strong enough to challenge the world. We all know what happened. Specimen number two. One man, Marx, had an idea. His idea was, one class shall rule. He wrote a book, Das Kapital, False Equality. The idea appeals to millions who feel the world must be changed and that violent revolution is the only realistic way of doing it. And many people still are controlled by these ideas. Specimen number three, Evolutionism. One man, Darwin, had an idea. His idea was, Man Evolved Through Natural Selection. He wrote a book, Origin of Species. The idea suited the intellectual minds. Man has grown up to be the highest evolved species. Man should no longer be governed by fables and myths of what cannot be seen or measured. You may or may not like this idea, but you must admit, many students have accepted it as fact from professors who teach it. What's all this got to do with us? Live and let live, I say. We agree to disagree and nothing changes. But no one who lives on this planet can remain unaffected by the ideological struggle, not even in the most remote places. In every place, each country, each factory, each trade union, each university, each newspaper, each church, each social organization, each prison or cult, materialistic ideas reach out to grip people's minds. The octopus of materialism in its natural state reaches for control of all and everything it can get its tentacles on. Sex, security, success, press, labor, school, governments, fanatical groups, intellectual and social think tanks, businesses, corporations, and financial institutions. Intellectual know-how or money is false security. Why do top scientists defect to other countries? Why do trusted men pass vital secrets to foreign powers? 
Why do government officials, even from top social and educational backgrounds, desert? Why? Because an ideology of evolution, survival of the fittest, of materialism, has captured their minds with power. He who has the most wins. Vyshinsky, the Russian foreign minister, and said, We shall conquer the world, not with atomic bombs, but with our ideas, brains, and doctrines. In the ideological age, the future lies in the hands of those who know how to use ideas to win men's allegiance to a world power. We seem to be spending millions on armaments. I suppose it's the only way to be safe in this violent world. Today, we need not only a gun in our hand, but we also need a moral idea in our heads and an answer in our hearts. Everything just seems to fall into more disorder in idealistic minds that are too small for this age. Modern warfare means that nations are outthought before they are outfought. Sexual promiscuity, alcohol, terrorism, drugs, abortion, all undermine society's structures. You just can't defeat an idea by being anti it, ignoring it, or shooting it. One can only successfully meet an idea with a superior idea. What is the superior idea? A very good question. Let's take a slight pause here for breath and refreshment while you get a piece of paper and write down what you think is the superior idea. <laughs> 